hello once again guys so uh today will be a continuation from yesterday's video so as you can see on the screen the diagram that we have where we spoke about supply and demand so let's just zoom in a bit so everybody can see uh, so we spoke about supply and demand uh, and then how how that affects prices and then we also went to explaining the phillips curve and then we got to understand the inflationary gap where inflation is high but unemployment is low that is essentially the expansion gap where the market is booming because if unemployment is low that means that that economy is growing right as we got to understand later when we went through inflation and then we also understood this is the ideal scenario where we have moderate inflation and moderate unemployment right or maximum or full employment this, this was the other scenario or situation that the economy can be in and then lastly we also looked at the recessionary gap right recessionary gap where unemployment is high but inflation is low right so whenever we get to see an economy where we're seeing that unemployment is high and and inflation is low then we understand that that economy is shifting towards the recession or in the recessionary gap phase so this essentially ties into gdp ties into the economic cycle right where we have an expansion and a recession or an expansion and a contraction and that is what we'll be getting into today we'll be talking about gdp slightly breaking down gdp and its four components right so this that is what we got to understand yesterday in the phillips curve and then further on we went to understand inflation right in terms of what causes inflation the two types of inflation cost push demand pull price of raw material oil going up perfect example right now we're having a war in the middle east uh, that that actually started uh, with uh, the war between uh, hamas as well as israel in gaza so now that has escalated further we're having what we're having the, the houthis actually bombing ships or attacking ships hijacking ships in the red sea and that is causing a disruption a disruption in what disruption in the transit or in 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 in, in the daily operations or co commuting of uh of ships in the actual in the actual red sea right for commercial pur purposes of course now what is that doing that is now affecting supply remember we said on the cost push side it is supply side situation and then on the demand pull it is demand and the on the cost push especially in the prices of raw materials this is what is happening as we're seeing with this that the, with the war that we have uh in the middle east right and the fact that now houthis are getting involved lebanon is getting involved iran is potentially getting involved and now the u.s is there in the red sea protecting the red sea by actually what by actually conducting air strikes against the houthis right so that is all co causing a geopolitical tension but most fundamentally it is affecting what it is affecting the supply side of things because now ships no longer take transit via the red sea some still do but most of them have now chosen to either stop their operations or pause their operations for the moment but then then some others have actually decided that they're gonna go via south africa via the cape of good hope and that is a a longer duration or a longer distance and that has caused um freight or, or or shipping costs to actually almost double right in terms of growth since since october so this is causing a disruption on the supply side so now oil is no longer getting to the to its destination on time so that is affecting supply and remember what we said if 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 supply is decreasing then or if demand exceeds supply then prices go higher so now if prices of oil start going higher as i expect them or anticipate that they will because of the whole war that is going that is going on that means that now we can start looking to buy oil but most importantly we also understand that this will feed into the cost push side of inflation and then that will keep inflation levels high in a in a period where central banks are looking to cut interest rates so that is what we also went over in terms of cost push then we also looked at uh demand pull inflation and on the demand pull inflation we obviously explained that it's because consumers have now have more disposable income they're working they're employed so now there's too much money that is chasing us a limited supply and that is what we've got to understand there right and then lastly we looked at how to actually lower high inflation this is the inflationary gap so if you're in an inflationary gap like we saw on the phillips curve where we have high uh, inflation but low unemployment in that case the economy is doing well the economy is growing the economy is expanding right so how do how do how do you approach that or how do you deal with an inflationary gap how do we get out of an inflationary gap essentially 
So fiscal policy, the government side, decrease government spending or increase taxes. That will decrease disposable income, decrease consumer spending and decrease demand. I need you guys to understand that consumers are a very big part of this whole cycle, right? An economy is essential to a certain extent, really nothing without consumers, right? So consumer spending is very important in terms of driving the economy higher or in terms of slowing down the economy if the economy is too hot, if we are in, a, in, an, in an inflationary gap and we're looking to get out of it, right? So on the monetary side of things, if we are in an inflationary gap, which is high inflation, monetary policy, the central bank can step in there and then what the central bank can do, they can decrease money supply by selling bonds, increase interest rates and increase the reserve ratio, right? So whenever you hear that a central bank is increasing the reserve ratio, you need to understand that it's because they're trying to lower high inflation. So whenever they are decreasing the reserve ratio, like I explained what a reserve ratio is yesterday, whenever they say that they are decreasing now, you know that they're probably in a recessionary gap. They might not be in a recession, but they in a recessionary gap where we have low and low low inflation and, and and unemployment is a bit high and so they're trying to do what they're trying to get out of a recessionary gap which is why they are decreasing the reserve ratio right so that is what we that is what we covered yesterday so what we're gonna do today is simple we're gonna look at gdp right so just the basics uh, or, or the components of gdp and then tomorrow tomorrow we'll definitely be looking at so let's do it like this yeah then tomorrow we'll definitely be looking at examples right so we're tying everything together and then we, we we're looking at actual live examples in terms of economies and how this impacts economies everything that we've learned seeing it in action seeing it on the chart how the price moves and all of that right so how you could actually get that direction because this is to give you the direction not not the entry but the direction once you understand this and you put everything together you get a solid direction and then all you have to do when you go on onto a price chart you are there to look for an entry you are look you are there to look for your execution point whether it's a basic su support and resistance whatever technical strategy you use you're looking to enter on the direction that you got from fundamentals so let's let's dive straight into gdp okay let, let's let's do this properly let's do it like Let me, let me draw another one here. Okay. Now let's just do a straight run because it's it doesn't wanna do what I want it to do. <laughs> so we are today we are looking at GDP, right? So the components of GDP. So let's uh, increase this to 80, then let us look at GDP. So I'll just write the, the abbreviation of it, which is gross domestic produce, right? So essentially it's how much the, 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 the economy has produced in a space of a year. And in that is obviously in a dollar value and that is what GDP is. So if GDP is growing, that means that economy is doing well it is growing it is expanding if gdp is decreasing that means that economy is not doing so well right it's struggling essentially uh, so that is what we'll be looking at so when it comes to gdp when it comes to gdp so gdp has let's make it straight so when it comes to GDP, GDP has four components, right? So the four components of GDP we have, okay, now it's doing what I wanted it to do. <laughs> so the first component of GDP that we have, okay, let me just draw all four arrows first and then I can explain everything. Yeah, I'll sort out my arrows them the, when I when I'm busy with everything. So we're gonna start with the biggest one and the most important one, and that is consumer spending, right? So consumer spending, and of course we're gonna have to change the the font size here, as well as okay, let's make it fifteen, and then change the color to white so that it matches everything else that we've done, right? So. 
but let's do this yeah so that is consumer spending right so consumer spending essentially it goes back to what we to what to what we just uh, broke down when it comes to the demand pool right when consumers are growing when so not growing but when more consumers are employed and businesses are expanding and more people have jobs so now more people have money to spend on goods and services so consumer spending or they now have excess disposable income or in disposable income increases so they can now spend spend on goods and services so that this is the big another big component of gdp right so this is essentially the biggest component of gdp to a certain extent and then when it comes to consumer spending we can break it down into two things that we pay most attention to right now i'm talking about when we're looking to trade so we're looking at consumer confidence right uh, confidence So we're looking at consumer confidence and then we're also looking at retail sales so these all these things are telling us that the, the, the spending or consumer spending right consumer confidence is telling us that if, if if consumers are confident in their economy and in their finances then that means that they're gonna spend money right and if they spend money like we said then that economy will grow right that economy will be in an expansionary phase but if they're not if they're not confident about the economy and what is currently happening then they they won't they will be reluctant to spend money so if they're reluctant to spend money then that won't do what that then that won't boost the economy right because remember what we said in an inflationary gap when they cut taxes they're trying to reduce disposable income so that they they can reduce consumer spending right or, or the demand or consumer demand right so it is the same thing here if consumers are not confident then they're not gonna spend money and that is gonna do what that is gonna lower the output of the economy from the consumer side and then retail sales of course it's about spending right um if they if the retail sales are high that means that consumers have money they spending which is good right so that is the first component of GDP. And then the second one here that we have, it is businesses, right? So this one is businesses. Let's say business, right? And then when it comes to business, we can also break business into two in terms of what we focus on. When it comes to business so firstly and then second one excuse me so when it comes to business we have the side business confidence right so we pay attention to business confidence so business confidence figures we pay attention to them because if they decreasing then of course that's also not good because remember like we said on the demand side or, or demand pull inflation it is consumers and businesses so if the confidence of business owners or businesses is not there or it's decreasing then that's not good for the economy right because then that means that economy won't really grow that much right so that is what we have there and then another another important one it is the pmis right so pmis so i'd say let me just say pmis we have manufacturing we have services pmi so those are showing us the health of the economy that's a survey which is the purchasing managers index so that is giving us an indication of the health of the economy so it's a survey that is done on the on the purchasing managers and of the manufacturing sector as well as the service sector right and a reading of 50 is the midline so anything above 50 means that economy is is, is expected to grow or the expectations from the purchasing managers is for that economy to grow if if the, the reading is at 49 and below then they're expecting that economy to shrink right or business to shrink right so that is essentially what we look at these are the components that we look at so pmis remember there is services and then there's manufacturing we also have composite which looks at both uh, services and manufacturing but just for this video we're just going to focus on services as well as manufacturing pmi and then another components that we're going to look at here so let's do this yeah i think 
this is better. So the third component we're going to look at is government. So we're also going to pay attention to government, right? Government spending. Government. Because that also feeds into GDP in the long run, right? Going to pay attention to government spending. So when it comes to government, we're more going to pay. You can look at debt to GDP, but we most, mostly what I pay attention to is the current account, right? Which gives us how things look from a balance sheet kind of perspective. Right, so current account. So that is what I focus on when it comes to the government. And then when it comes to, lastly, exports or import, this is what is called balance of trade or trade balance. Trade balance, right? And then when it comes to trade balance, we can break up trade balance into two exports and imports, right? So we have exports as well as imports. Because remember, businesses are, sorry, not businesses, but economies are actually businesses, right? So they, they transact in exports and imports. They buy and sell, essentially. That is what it means. So we have imports. And then we have exports. Right. So... So this is GDP and its four components. So the first component of GDP is consumer spending. We're focusing on consumer confidence and retail sales. GDP business-wise, we're focusing on business confidence and PMI services and manufacturing. Government, we look at current account. And then the trade balance, of course, it composes of imports and exports. So trade balance can be in a deficit or it can be in a surplus. When is it in a surplus? It is in a surplus when exports exceed what? imports so that means that the business is selling more than they are bringing in right so they are selling more than they are buying and then if the trade balance is in a deficit that means that the exports or the imports are greater than the exports in this case that means that that business is selling less essentially but they are buying more right so like how you run a business if you're not selling as much but you're always buying but you're not selling as much then you run in a deficit right so essentially that is how we look at the trade balance but the most biggest one the most important one is consumer spending why because when consumers are not spending then businesses will shut down if businesses shut down then things are not looking good right so if consumers are not spending then businesses will suffer if businesses shut down then the governments now need to come to the rescue either by increasing by decreasing taxes or decreasing taxes or increasing government spending why do i say that because we're in a recessionary gap because if consumers are no longer spending and businesses are now shutting down that means that unemployment is going higher and then we then go back now to who we then go back to Phillips curves because it means that unemployment is getting higher because businesses are no longer spending right and that obviously no which means because consumers are no longer spending and businesses are closing down so unemployment is going higher inflation should go down that means we're in a recessionary gap right so that that is why i keep on saying that consumers are very important in this whole cycle right because if they're not there they're not spending money then businesses will suffer and if businesses suffer then unemployment will go higher and then that is when the government will need to step in to, to try and save the economy by giving the economy a boost by cutting cutting taxes if they cut taxes, of course, remember what we said yesterday, they're opening up the, 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 the profit margin for businesses. And then businesses could start what? They could start growing again and start spending again, right? And then they could also look at, uh, at uh, increasing government spending or doing some projects that, that will boost the economy, that will boost employment, right? So that is when we are in a recessionary gap. And if we are in an inflationary gap, that is when, of course, we have high consumer spending, high business spending, and then the, what does the government do in that case they come in and they do what we explained in this case of killing inflation where they actually increase taxes or they decrease government spending when we are in a what in a inflationary gap right so this is essentially the basics of gdp uh the components of gdp and how they affect the, the, the they affect the whole market and the role of gdp in the market and then the different components that actually contribute to GDP. But in essence, if GDP is not growing or GDP is slowing, then that is not good for that economy. If GDP is increasing, then it's good for that economy. So now, 
excuse me guys so now we have an understanding of the relationship between unemployment and inflation based on the phillips curve what causes inflation the two types of inflation cost push as well as demand pull then we also understand now how do you lower inflation in an inflationary gap where inflation is high but unemployment is low of which that is good because remember that's a that's that's in inflationary gap in a say in a sense it's a healthy economy because course inflation is not healthy but it's a healthy economy in the sense that that economy is booming right because when it comes to gdp we have business cycles we have expansionary and then we have contractionary or recessionary so whenever the the, the an economy is in it's in is in an uh, expansionary phase generally that's the inflationary gap because if unemployment is low more people are getting money they're spending so that expands the economy the economy grows right businesses grow that's expansion but if on the other hand we're in a recessionary gap where now unemployment is high and then inflation is low where consumers are not spending that much because remember they of course they don't have money to spend so there's not enough money that is chasing uh that is chasing so there's not too much money chasing the limited supply so it leaves supply higher right so what happens inflation goes lower there or prices go lower and in that case that is in a recessionary gap right so those are the two economic cycles where we either where the economy finds itself like i said yesterday when we're doing the phillips curve that it's either inflationary gap ideal scenario or recessionary gap so this is a this essentially ties back to GDP and your understanding of GDP because if consumers are not spending businesses will suffer if businesses suffer Then now the government needs to step in and that will also affect the current account, right? And then that will that to a certain extent will also affect what trade balance because if If, if there's no consumers to spend then why are we on why are we importing goods, right? Who are we importing goods for you know, so so it's all a cycle. It's all a cycle so the economy is always in a expansion recessionary expansion recessionary expansion recessionary so for you when it comes to fundamentals is to understand which cycle are we in based on what the data is telling you and then once you understand that in terms of which cycle you are in then you know how to position yourself appropriately right because you know what to do at that specific point you know how to react how to respond at that specific point right so i just wanted to break down gdp to you and then because I don't want this video to drag on and to be long and to be another hour long video. So tomorrow we're going to look at the example. So now we'll be tying everything together and looking at the price chart. Because I know a lot of you guys have been waiting to look at the price chart and say, okay, fine, Sanele, you've taught us this. Now, how do we then apply it into the market? How do we then find the direction into the market? I'll show you how simple it can be and how straightforward it becomes once you understand this. But if you nail down this whole scenario or this whole uh, explanation or diagram that i've just shared with you it will change everything for you in the market right so remember supply and demand phillips curve inflation how do we lower inflation if we are in an inflationary gap and if we are in a recessionary gap remember we do the opposite of everything that i've stated here in terms of government we do what they increase spending if we are in a recessionary gap because they're trying to get out of a recession if they want to get out of a recession they increase government spending they increase they decrease uh taxes right because they want to free up money so that gov so that businesses and consumers can have disposable income and then on the monetary policy side the central bank what do they do they in this case they increase money supply when they're trying to get out of a recession because they want more money into the hands of consumers so that they can spend businesses can grow buy machinery expand franchise all of that shebang you know so that is what they're trying to do in a what in a when they're trying to get out of a recession and then lastly this also ties into gdp right so everything feeds into itself so there's no there's not one thing that is a standalone but this for me is what i consider to be the basics right of trading with fundamentals especially because we're not we're not we're not we're not economists we are traders at the end of the day we investors so this is more than enough as a basic foundational understanding for you to apply yourself consistently in the market and to be on the right side of the market essentially most of the time because you from here you're getting the value of the market and in this case in this way sorry you are also able to do what to project 
or forecast where the market is heading based on what the data is telling you. So if you're seeing that consumer spending or, consu or retail sales are going down, consumer confidence is going down, then you know that, okay, that's gonna affect businesses. Okay, that means that GDP will be going lower, right? So that's not good, you know? So all of those things, then they give you a direction of that specific economy, but you tie everything together. If you hear that the reserve ratio is being cut, uh, or it's being increased uh, let's let's uh, let's actually do this one we'll just only do this example for today uh, I just couldn't hold myself <laughs> we'll just uh, we'll just do this example for today so let's go on to China right so remember we said if if they in a, an inflationary gap where inflation is high that is when they they actually do what to get out in the in terms of the central bank they increase they the, sorry they decrease the money supply and then they also do what to the reserve ratio they also increase the reserve ratio. So in this case, if we look at China, China, let's look at inflation. We can see that inflation is in the negative, right? So inflation is in the negative. So they actually in it in it in deflation right now. So that means that for them, if we if we go back to the Phillips curve, if we go back to the Phillips curve, inflation is quite low, right? So that means that unemployment should also be ticking higher, right? So now let's go to unemployment. Let's look at unemployment and let's see what's happening with unemployment uh, with labor. So let's see unemployment. But tomorrow we'll just be focusing on doing examples and also getting into uh, to the actual charts. But I just wanted to show you this. So this is unemployment. As you can see, unemployment is not that high. It's not good. It's actually, let's look at a five year. So it spiked up in 2022 and has been going lower. So it's not really that high. Unemployment is still good. But then let's go to money, right? Interest, let's go to money and let's look at the reserve the reserve ratio. So money, uh, where's the reserve? Oh, cash reserve ratio, right? So let's look at the cash reserve ratio. So the People's Bank of China will reduce the reserve ratio, the reserve requirement ratio for all banks by 50 basis points to 10% starting from February 5th releasing up to one one trillion yen uh, to the market to boost the economic recovery so now by just reading that statement if we go back to this and we go back to how do you actually uh, how do you actually lower inflation in this case what did we just read we read that they are actually boosting or trying to boost the economy by actually doing what by actually cutting the reserve ratio so in this case remember if we're getting out of a of an inflationary gap where there's high inflation we increase the reserve ratio so that means that the opposite of this decreasing in uh, decreasing the reserve ratio it is because they're doing what they're trying to boost the economy avoid getting deeper into a recessionary gap that is what the chinese economy or people's bank of china are actually trying to do so in this case what do you then do you then look to sell the Chinese the Chinese currency right but this is just one example and like I showed you uh, when it comes to their their interest rates so not interest rates when it comes to their actual uh, uh, inflation it's in the negative so inflation is low so definitely the scale looking at the Phillips curve we are more to the right more to the inflation to the recessionary gap so this is how you then put everything together so now you see the direction of the Chinese economy and if they if the government is trying all these things or the, the the central bank which is the people bank of china they're trying to cut the reserve ratio so that they can free up more spending of banks so that means that what they're trying to boost that economy so now we're viewing that, that okay that, that that means the economy is struggling so then we sell that economy especially if we if they keep making these attempts and they not and they're struggling to actually boost economic growth in china and then eventually getting to cutting interest rates then that is when we also continue selling the chinese uh currency right so this is just one example tomorrow we'll get into more example and actually look at a price chart uh, to actually understand everything so once again if you like this video and if this video makes sense to you give it a thumbs up of course and then also hit the subscribe button and then do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when I drop another video and don't miss tomorrow's video. Remember, I drop videos on on uh, at 9 a.m. South African time. So that is 9 a.m. GMT plus two. That is when I drop videos. So don't miss tomorrow's videos where I'll be going into the technical side because I know everybody's been waiting. 
no we want to see the technical analysis side of things where you okay you've explained this now show us how we apply this on on a chart how do we take advantage of this of this knowledge and then actually trade better when it comes to technical analysis that is what i'll be showing you tomorrow so don't miss tomorrow's uh uh video right so like i said subscribe and don't forget to like the video if you found value in this video until tomorrow then cheers